What's up guys? In today's video, I'll go over how I installed a, um, a mini split with two heads. So you got this guy, this guy, and finally the condenser slash compressor uh, with the um, uh, platform underneath here, the slab. So it is true that we are going to build a passive house on this property. But we bought a property based on the location and uh, the land. And this one happened to have a manufactured house from 1979 on it. We found out that through the local utility district, we could buy a mini split and get $2,400 back if we converted our forced air electric that we had already to a mini split. And there's nothing that says that we can't then later on repurpose it into a new location. So that's what we're going to do. So instead of waiting and installing it later on, we purchased it now, got $2,400 in a check. If we were converting a, a forced air to a mini split for a residential home, just a regular home that's not manufactured home, the check that you got from the utilities was $1,200. So you actually save quite a bit of money if you are trying to do the same thing and you find a property that has an old manufactured house on it. We'll also get 30% back on our federal taxes uh, up to, I think it's $2,000 maximum. So um, I got two different quotes. One quote for a company was 8,000 or 9,000. The other one was 11,000. I was able to do it all for about 3,800. That's including the two heads, the condenser, building, the pad underneath, all the wiring, uh, circuit breakers, everything. And uh, so I'll get, let's say it was $4,000, I will get $1,200 off on my federal taxes on top of the 2,400 that I already uh, got from my utilities. So this was a no brainer. Later on, when we build a house, we'll just suck all the coolant back into the unit and then move it over as a backup system for our uh, hydronic radiant floor heating. So go ahead and check it out. For our temporary housing, we're gonna improve the heating that's here. And we're gonna move the heater over to the um, garage with the inlay unit on it later on. For today, I'm building a small platform just to um, have the compressor for the mini split on. So I started with making a frame out of two by four, then used the rotor tiller just to get down to dirt. Now I'm gonna put a layer of gravel down there before we pour the concrete. So we got the gravel bed in. Today I'm gonna make it easy by just putting in quick crete. And here's a little trick I learned. You take one of those uh, bags, put it over a two by four, then you can easily split it, split it in half in case you don't need to use all of it or if it's easier to handle just half at a time. I'll show you. So now once you get to here, just go ahead and cut it. There you go. And let's see if I can do this with one hand. Probably not. Let's see. Maybe. There you go. Oh. Put together, kind of just separate the seam so that it's nice and clean. And then cut across here. Now you have two small bags. I was gonna go ahead and cut some rebar and put it in about halfway through. But then I realized I have this metal shelf that I'm not using for anything. So I'm just gonna cut that one to length and uh, use that for reinforcement. There we go. I think that's a pretty good use for a of a metal shelf. So here's what I got from uh, Home Depot. Got two heads and one compressor that's sitting outside. Both the heads are 9K. Comes with a template. We'll mount that template later on. I've opened it up now and here's what's inside the box. We got the head itself, the standard length of electrical connections, the remote, a uh, smart USB controller that goes inside here. Uh, if work, if I want a smart or a hat. An enormous manual for the remote control. Same thickness 
for the installation, which is strange. Quick start guide, a filter, some pads that I'm sure I'm gonna learn about soon. Some uh, screws, an elbow and thick O-ring and batteries for the remote. Here we got the compressor or condenser itself. And then we have two sets of line sets. One going to the front and one going to the back. I just lifted the top off of the box and found the condenser and lifted it easily by myself over here. It came with these rubber feet that we'll put underneath to isolate any vibrations. And we should be good to go and open up the line sets. So just opened up the two boxes of the line sets. You can see that this is where the sleeve is located. I was wondering if they forgot to send that along with the head. But that's in this box along with some tape and also a new electrical wire which matches the length of the line set. So that is something I got to remember to swap that out on the head itself before I go ahead and run this line. Since my line set is longer than the standard, I'm going to have to unscrew this and switch out to the longer one that came with it. So now that we have this uh, mounting plate on the wall, next thing is to drill out that three and a half inch or 90 millimeter hole. So I went to Home Depot and got this one, three and a half inch, which is slightly less than 90 millimeters, but it should be okay. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Yeah, next thing now is to install the sleeve. I think, you see how it's flat on top? Makes sense that that one would be on the, yeah, on the top side. Um, I think I might have angled it a little too much down because uh, now I can't get this flat against the wall, but we will see if it's okay. All right. I took this pipe out and marked it where it went across the wall and cut it. So now we're going to go ahead and install it. And here's the ring on the outside. Just a little trim piece that goes on top of it. Now the next thing to do is to feed all this extra wire out through that hole and then hang the unit on the mounting plate. So I have this one coming out of the window here, or above the window, off to the side. Then I'm going to have it come down, and then under this temporary house to the other side. And then let's go over here. Here on the side of the house, I have the Mr. Cool Condenser slash compressor uh, mounted onto the pad that I made. I have it hooked up here uh 240 30 amp 10 gauge wire goes into this disconnect which is currently disconnected just pull that and then turn it around switch it back in and we'll be good to go again and then let's go to the last one so here we are on the back of the house i have uh, connected lightly the this hose right here two of them I'm gonna go up there and tighten them down real good. Attach the drain, which I think I'm just gonna drain right down in here. And then I gotta take this line, run it underneath the house, over to the other side, and connect it into the condenser. Before I run it over there, they send this tape along with it. They wrap all the hoses in. So I'm gonna wrap them together, make sure I leave room up there at the connections so that I can check with uh, some soapy water later to see if there are any leaks. I have now go ahead and wrapped the lines. It's going from the other side and then coming up here and finishing up there. So you can see it's still tied off just so I can check if there are any leaks in the connections later on. And then it comes out on the other side here. right here so this is going to be the first one you can see we have 
two different lines here. Uh, they are going to go in on the side. Let me go around the back side. We have uh, two connections, a uh, blue and a white per line. So this is for two heads, right? And then for the electrical connections, they come in on top here. I now have the first one connected. So we're using A on the bottom here. So we got these two connected in here. They're color coordinated, so that was easy to do. And so it says that's A. I also connected to A up here. One, two, three for A. And then we have one, two, three for B next to it. So there's coming in here. That would be the next head. We have now hooked up all the wires and opened four valves on the side here since I have two lines. So they're coming in here, one going that way, one going that way. I uh, fixed or set the uh, um, manual disconnect, so that one's good to go. Now it's just a circuit breaker inside and we can give it a go. This side is done until I get the cover. Still waiting for the cover. Will be about a week before I get it. Check the with leak detector and um, let's see what it's called. That makes sense. Leak detector. There's no leak so far. All right, now we're gonna fire it up. I'm now doing the first out of two tests. So the unit insides are on. They're at the max cool setting, which is 62 degrees, and they are gonna be running there for. Um, five minutes. Then I'm going to swap it over to heat and run that for five minutes. And then we should be all right. The last thing I had to do here on the outside, other than cover it up later, was to wrap this fairly thick material around the valves after you leak check them, just so that uh, if they lean against the wall, you don't hear a lot of vibration. I'm now all done except for the covers on the outside. And I did have one issue. You can see here that you have the Wi-Fi uh, symbol there now. Uh, I did connect the Wi-Fi dongle, which is sitting in here, um, when I first got the unit. And when I then tried to set up the app later on, it turned out that it, it would not work. And the reason was after a certain amount of time, of being plugged in, it no longer uh, registers. So then what you have to do is go over to the remote and see that LED right there, LED? You press that seven times. Then it says AP up on that one, and then it's in programming. And at that point, it shows back up again. And then you just follow the instructions in the app. We have had the units running for three days now and we are super happy with it. It is extremely quiet, maintains a very good uh, temperature at all times, and the app that it comes with on your phone is very easy to configure so that you can have different times of, times of day where you have different temperatures, or uh, if you're outside a certain area. Uh, anyway, very customizable. I don't recommend trying to uh, add a smart thermostat or anything. What you can do via the app is much smarter than that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Text me if you have any questions. Um, leave a message below. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.